Hello students. Now today we are going to start the problems. The problem first convert convert the following you have to convert the first number that is 1500 hertz to certain kilohertz second number that is 11 kilo volt to a volt then c number that is 1200 milli ampere into ampere okay so what you are going to require you have to convert this hertz into kilohertz you have to convert kilovolt into volt you have to convert milli ampere into ampere so the simple way for conversion it is if you divide this 1500 with 1000 that 1000 that 1000 is indicated with a 10 to the power 3 so this 10 to the power 3 is nothing but it is related with a kilo so if you have the a number that is 1500 hertz and suppose you divide this 1500 with 1000 then you are getting the value that is 1.5 now as i told you 10 to the power 3 is nothing but it is a 1000 so it may directly get converted and you will be getting the value 1.5 kilo hertz then the second number answer the volt okay this volt as earlier i told you that 10 to the power 3 is nothing but the 1000 so suppose you have written 1 1 kilo volt this 1 1 kilo volt this k is nothing but it is considered as a 10 to the power 3 so you will be getting that is 1 1 multiplied by 10 to the power 3 volt that uh, 10 to the power 3 is nothing but it is a 1000 so 1 1 1 2 3 0 with a volt so in this way this 11 kilo volt has been get converted into the volt and you are getting the value 1 1 0 0 volt then the c number third number that is 1200 milli ampere it has to be get converted into the ampere okay so simple again the same process if you divide that particular with the 1000 then you are getting the value that is milli ampere but in the milli ampere you have the value that is 10 to the power minus 3 so as soon as you convert this value divide that value with a 1000 then you will be getting the value that is 1200 now this milli ampere how the interest to power minus 3 so you will be getting 1.2 ampere okay in this way the conversion is going to be occurred of this problem then the second number second number problem you have to calculate the internal resistance calculate the internal resistance if the output of a source drops from 100 volt with zero load current with a zero load current to a 90 volt to 90 volt with the load current of 2 ampere this is the problem now in this problem very first you understood that the internal resistance the internal resistance it is given by the internal resistance of any circuit resistance is given by v n l minus v l divided by i l so this is the required formula by using this particular formula you will get the answer okay as per v n l is the no load voltage v l is the load voltage i l is the load current okay v n l 
is the no load voltage no load voltage then vl is the load voltage il is the load current il is the load current so this is the specification which is given to you now here the vnl value the output of the source drop from 100 volt with a zero load current to 90 volt so how much value for the no load current it is a vnl is equal to you are getting the value that is 100 volt then second vl the drops across the zero load current that is a 90 volt so it is 90 volt then with a load current of 2 ampere then load current that is i l is equal to 2 ampere so now you put this three value in this equation so that you will be getting 100 minus 90 divided by 2 means here 10 upon 2 is equal to 5 ohms so this is the internal resistance of any circuit when this one value has been get calculated okay then the second number uh, sorry third number suppose you have the DC source uh, generator a generator has an open circuit open circuit EMF of 20 volt its terminal its terminal voltage drop its terminal voltage drop to 16 volt 16 volt with RL of 40 ohms RL of 40 ohms calculate internal resistance internal resistance okay so here you have given the generator has an open circuit EMF of 20 volt okay the open circuit voltage that is VNL it is VNL that is nothing but it is source voltage it is given by 20 volt and the terminal voltage that is VT terminal voltage that is VT has been given 16 volt okay so you have the formula that is V is equal to I into R so I is equal to V upon R so what will be the value okay you have this Vs okay this Vs value is considered as a voltage and the resistance how will be the resistance with a load resistance of a 40 ohms okay and what you have to do you have to do the terminal voltage the value for that one it is 20 divided by the rs plus rl is equal to 20 divided by rs plus load value it is 40 so what will be getting i is equal to 20 divided by rs plus 40 this one we are going to consider but here the terminal voltage it is given by i into rl okay so what is the value for the i we have found out we have found out the value that is 20 divided by rs plus 40 the value for the rl it is 40 here vt it is nothing but it is 16 volt so you just put the vt is equal to 16 and after that you have the cross multiplication then by using this cross multiplication you will be getting the value that is 60 divided by 40 is equal to 20 divided by rs plus 40 okay after 
cross multiplication you are getting the internal resistance that is r s is equal to here 60 here the value will be get converted and the last value that is 10 ohms you will be getting r s is equal to 10 ohms okay so these are the three problems which is very much uh, important from your examination point of view in a ELO standard okay then the next problem that is related with a series and the parallel value of the uh, circuit you have uh, fourth number problem the current source the current source of 1.5 milli ampere with internal resistance with internal resistance of 3 kilo ohms is connected is connected to load consisting of two parallel to parallel branches as shown in figure as shown in figure determine determine the current flowing in the 30 kilo ohms resistance okay students the problem diagram has been given to you here this is the diagram which is already given one resistance has been given the terminal a and the terminal b which is being separated by this particular line one resistance has been attached here the second resistance has been attached like this the value for the current that is 1.5 milli ampere it is indicated with the is then the current i1 the value for the series resistance that is 3 kilo ohms then r1 value that is 10 kilo ohms r2 value that is 30 kilo ohms and the branch current that is i2 i3 and here the i4 so this is the given problem to you now what you have to do you have to find out the value for the current and the different how much value the 30 kilo ohms resistance the current in the 30 kilo ohms resistance you have to calculate okay so solution you have now consider this circuit by observing what you are observing this r1 and r2 it is in the parallel so first you solve this r1 and r2 whatever the value will be getting it is been get converted and only the one resistance will be get drawn by you now 10 r1 and r2 it is in a parallel so the value that is rl instead of using this particular one we will be using the rl value so r1 into r2 divided by r1 plus r2 what is the value for r1 that is 10 into 30 divided by 10 plus 30 so 300 divided by 4 t is equal to it is if you divide then you will be getting the value that is 7.5 kilo ohms okay this and this will be get cancelled and since 300 means 30 divided by 4 you will be getting 7.5 kilo ohms as the value is in a kilo ohms we have drawn the one resistance that is load rl it is 7.5 kilo ohms then the current is been get divided the current which current this is current the is current divides itself with the two branches two branches consisting of consisting of rs that is i1 and rl that is i2 now we have found out the rl these two has been removed 
only the one resistance has been kept here and that's why they have told the rl into i2 now the second number current that is i2 current is equal to is into rl divided by rs plus rl okay this is the value we should be getting now the what is the value for the is this is value it is a uh, 1.5 milliampere that is a source current so 1.5 milliampere it is 10 raised to power minus 3 multiply by it is a multiplication so what is the value for rl this rl we have found out 7.5 that is a value okay so the uh, rs value and the rl value will be get occupied so the rs value will be 3 kilo ohms 3 multiply by 10 to the power 3 divided by 3 multiply by 10 to the power 3 plus 7.5 into 10 to the power 3 so this is the value which we will be getting now for after multiplication all the values you will be getting 1.5 into 10 to the power minus 3 multiply by 3 into 10 to the power 3 3 plus 7.5 multiply by 10 to the power 3 so at the end uh, 3 then 5 10.5 10.5 10 15 into 3 1.5 will be getting 0 0.42 milli ampere so here the i2 the value it is 0 0.42 42 milliampere when the value has to be get occur to the 30 kilo ohm they have asked how much current is flowing in the 30 kilo ohms resistance so here the current in 30 kilo ohms resistance which is be get flown that is it is indicated with the i4 i4 is nothing but it is equal to i2 multiply by r1 divided by r1 plus r2 is equal to i2 what is the value for the i2 we have found out the value that is this one 0 0.42 milliampere so we will just put that value that is 0 0.42 into 10 to the power minus 3 multiply by what is the value for r1 r1 it is 10 kilo ohms so 10 multiply by 10 to the power 3 divided by 10 into 10 to the power 3 plus what is the value for r2 it is 30 into 10 to the power 3 again the same thing 0 0.42 multiply by 10 to the power minus 3 multiply by 10 into 10 to the power 3 divided by 10 plus 30 in bracket multiply by 10 to the power 3 again this and this will be get cancelled 10 divided by 4 uh, 10 divided by 40 10 divided by 40 point 42, point 42 and point 42 that is you will be getting the value 0 0.10 milli ampere okay in this way the resistance in this way the current that is i4 it is flowing across the 30 kilo ohms resistance okay in this way we are going to solve the hello students now we have some few definitions we have to solve the definitions you have in the second number topic the 11 standard second number topic the voltage and current value current value for a for a sine wave sine wave that is a sinusoidal wave here you have the instantaneous value you have the instantaneous value this instantaneous value the value of the alternating quantity current or voltage at a known instant time is called as an instantaneous value here you may write down also the value of an alternating quantity alternating quantity which are that alternating quantity current or 
voltage these are the two alternating quantity at a known instant time at a known instant time is called instantaneous value instantaneous value so this is the first definition which you are getting for the current and the voltage value for the sine wave then as we have studied the wave this was the wave okay this is the one wave here we have told that it is a positive vm and here we are getting the minus vm okay so here from this one you are getting the angle that is 0 to 90 degree it is 180 degree it is 270 degree and it is 360 degree okay it is all in the angle but if you are going to consider the radian the value you are getting in the form of a pi okay now this positive and the negative vm positive vm and the negative vm if we are able to combine we are getting the value that is vpp and that vpp is nothing but it is twice vm for this positive peak and for this negative peak we are getting the first number uh, sorry the second number you are getting that is a peak value peak value this peak value it is indicated with this is the maximum value this is the maximum value of voltage which voltage either this or either this you may consider that is a plus vm or a current if the current has been asked then you may write down the current again which current maximum current okay the peak value the peak value applies to either positive or negative as earlier I told you the positive for the positive you are getting the plus Vm and for the negative you are obtaining the minus Vm so any positive or the negative value is to be get considered since this VPP is occurred this VPP is nothing but it is a peak to peak voltage peak to peak voltage okay students so peak to peak voltage what you are getting that is 2 into Vm that is twice Vm okay in this way you are be getting the value that is a peak value from this peak value you will be obtaining the factor that factor it is indicated by peak factor peak factor this factor it is given by peak value divided by RMS value and at the the value which has been get occurred that is 1.414 it is standard value for the peak factor okay so the second number you are getting the peak value then a third number that is average value average value this average value it is the arithmetic average of all the value it is the arithmetic average of all the value in a sine wave in a sine wave of students for a half cycle okay it is specified only for the one particular half cycle over a full cycle the average value is zero okay 
if it is full cycle full cycle average value is equal to 0 now what will be the particular average value for this one particular thing the average value it is indicated with average value is equal to 0 0.637 multiply by peak value by a peak value then a fourth number you are getting it is a third number then the fourth number that is a r m s that is root mean square root mean square this root mean square it is nothing but the value for the sine wave voltage this one sign has been indicated how much value suppose from here to here it is 90 degree then here if you make half then you are getting the value that is 45 degree okay if you make this half then you are getting one particular 135 and then 180 then again half portion then again quarter quarter to quarter you are getting the value that is a rms the value of sine wave voltage sine wave voltage or current at 45 degree which is 70.7 percent of peak value is called rms that is the root mean square or the another name for this rms it is also called or it is also called as a effective value effective value okay and it is given by rms is equal to 0 0.707 multiply by peak value peak value that is vrms is equal to vrms is equal to 0 0.707 vm and if the current we are going to consider irms is equal to 0 0.707 into im okay so it is the fourth number then if it is power power you have the standard formula that is i square into r or you may consider in a voltage that is v square by r unless and until it indicated otherwise all the sine wave for the ac measurement are in a rms value the main supply this is the main supply that is 230 volt ac that is vrms is equal to vrms is equal to you are getting this value that is vrms is equal to 230 volt but the form factor for that rms value by the average value you are getting the 1.11 okay then the other important terms which is related to this sine wave that is other important terms other important terms first it is frequency frequency it is indicated with the f it is defined as the number of cycle number of cycle per second is called frequency it is indicated with the f the unit for the frequency is unit for frequency is hertz okay or you may say that it is cycle per second suppose you have one kilohertz and you told to convert that kilohertz into hertz then what will be the value 10 to the power 3 hertz if you have 1 megahertz then it is 10 to the power 6 hertz 
if it is 1 gigahertz then it is 10 to the power 9 hertz if it is 1 terahertz then you will be saying that it is 10 to the power 12 hertz ok students it is all about the frequency as I told you in our India in India the frequency is 50 hertz and in USA the frequency is 60 hertz ok this is one of the important term in India voltage is 230 volt in USA the voltage is 120 volt ok so it is one of the prediction which you have to follow generally in 12 standard y y this one anyone should ask then comes a period I will draw the wave like this it is a sine wave here you are calculating the time that is a one cycle it is nothing but it is a time and the frequency it is given by the value that is a f now the time period time period it is indicated with a t given by the amount of time for one cycle is called period ok or you may say that it is a periodic time it is a periodic time indicated with a t the unit for this it is the SI unit for the time period that is a second ok students so you have T is equal to 1 upon F previously the frequency which was given by our me that is F is equal to 1 upon T the value and now the time period that is T is equal to 1 upon F consider that 1 millisecond is occurred so you will be get converted that value 10 to the power minus 3 second if it is 1 microsecond then that value is 10 to the power minus 6 second if 1 nanosecond is to be get occurred then 10 to the power minus 9 second if 1 picosecond is to be occurred then the value will be 10 to the power minus 12 second ok then comes a wavelength wavelength it is indicated with a lambda that is look like this is equal to the distance traveled by the wave this is the wave this is the wave how much distance is traveled by the wave in a one cycle it is called as a wavelength definition the distance travel by the waves in one cycle is called wavelength is called wavelength that is indicated with a this lambda ok its SI unit SI unit is in meter ok SI unit is in a meter so the lambda is equal to velocity by frequency velocity by frequency the velocity in the air or vacuum it is 3 into 10 to the power minus uh, 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second 
what is the speed of the light that speed of the light the velocity is going to be get occurred okay thank you